Yo, yo, yo. Seth, what up? Fuck Donald Trump. Ha! Remember that song? John Nelson, what up? We got a new... uh, I know Gabe said the same thing. (laughs) Oh, shit. Yeah. We got some new shit, at least. They got a woman... And uh, we just took the lesser of two evils, I guess, and swapped out a, another old white motherfucker. So, hey, guess it has to be better. I just wanted to tell that motherfucker he was fired. It's a trip, Gabe. I posted the shit on... Uh, I posted that shit. I just posted a little video, dog. Motherfucking redneck hick fucks talking shit. Had to bang on him a little bit. Shit is crazy. Oh, I fully agree, Seth. That's what I've been saying. It ain't nothing different. It ain't going to change shit. I guess it's just the lesser of two evils. Cats are probably relieved. I think black folks are probably relieved. And hopefully it ends up being better for them and, and, and they can walk their kids down the street. Shit. So that's all I want to see. Motherfuckers can breathe a little bit, even though it didn't just start because of Trump. But that motherfucker sure wasn't helping the cause. It still ain't official, you know. The motherfucker's gonna go to uh, go, you know. He's gonna go fucking appeal it and go to court and all that shit. So, you know, it's going. He's gonna try to stay in there. I hope they drag that motherfucker out, whiny crybaby little bitch. Shit. That's why I try to tell people like fucking Jamel Hill. Me and Michael Rappaport had to bang on her. She said it's because of white folks if Trump gets uh, approved, uh, reelected. We had to. Motherfucker, first of all. You had a lot of brothers and Hispanics vote for this motherfucker. We need to just stop generalizing each ourselves, man, because it ain't. It ain't all Uncle Tom and sellout that voted for him that's black. And it ain't all racist that's white that voted for him. It's all fucked up. So shitload of Cubans voted for him down in Miami because he didn't even win Miami like Hillary Clinton did. So who knows, man? I don't know. Hey, I'm glad to be coaching football today with y'all. I'll let a few more cats get in and then uh, we'll get it going. Hopefully my camera don't go out. Gabe, it's raining down there.
Yeah, it's raining hard as fuck here. Lee, what up? Yes, sir. He's been fired. Oh, yeah, we, that's all. We're we just shooting the shit while some people get, get in here before I start the show. Oh, I mean, shit. Lesser of two evils, bro. I'm just chilling. Are you in Big Bear, Gabe? Oh, okay. Yeah, it's crazy. It was 92 here yesterday where I'm at, Gabe, and that shit is 50. It's 49 today. Like, what the fuck? It, sound, it, it feel like Kansas weather. It'd be 96, next day snow. Callie, shut your ass up. I got Clemson big. <laughs> motherfucker told me hey man you've been fired too i said shut up and show me your teeth you fucking bitch there's so many cowardly fucks on there shane what up about to get this show started Eric T, what up? Hey, just a reminder, all you guys in the show, I appreciate you guys. Uh, December 1st, this show becomes exclusively members only for uh, high-tier members. So, like I said, I'll be sharing video. I'll be sharing uh, documents, all those things. I just can't do it for free, brother. I'm already doing this for two months for free. But it's been uh, appreciated. You guys are here listening. Hope you guys are some coaches or managers or something, getting something out of it. I'm about to start this show up. Appreciate you guys being here. Let's get it cracking. These things are, are uh, hidden gems. And it's as cold as the dope game, like I can tell you people. Get the job done. Culture 101. Get the job done. Always oh, first, second, and none. Get the job done. Culture 101. Get the job done. No excuses on your useless. Get the job done. Culture 101. Get the job done. Coach Jason Brown. Get the job done. You know how he get, get down. Get the job done. Culture 101. Get the job done. Subscribe, become a member. I'm telling you, you're not going to get this anywhere else. Get the job done. You're watching Coach 101 with Coach Jason Brown. Get the job done. What is your mission statement? Win is my motto. What up? What up? Hey, I appreciate you guys joining the Coaching 101 show, man. Yeah, Chris, it's funny as hell. I laugh, man. I'm just talking shit. I like talking shit. All these motherfucking teethless fucks. Uh, toothless. I don't know the grammatically correct terminology on that one. Hey, uh, appreciate you guys being here, man. Um, this show's Coaching 101 is going to be called What It Takes to Be a Football Coach. What it actually takes to become a football coach or to be a coach, a lot of people don't know. So I'm going to get into a few different broad little subjects, and uh, I'm going to share the screen real quick. And I'm going to uh, 
Man, let me pull up the quote of the day real quick for all of you coaches out there that need something. It's not how we make mistakes, but how we correct them that defines us. That's what defines us. We all fuck up. We all make fucked up mistakes. We all do stupid shit. But do we correct them or do we keep doing the same shit over and over? It's not how we make mistakes, but how we correct them that defines us. So, look, I'm going to get into this show today. Um, What it takes to be a football coach, and uh, it's going to have a lot of detail in there. All right, so hopefully you guys can see this. What it takes to be a football coach, all right? There's – I'm going to put on this thing here, but I I consider there to be four – types of coaches all right you there's four types in my opinion this is my opinion now this is jb's opinion this ain't uh, i don't know you know whoever else but this is my opinion on how many what i believe there to be and um number one Coach, there's there's recruiters, there's technicians, there's yellers, and 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 you got all these different style of coaches. But you got to understand. I talked to you guys about philosophies. About I talked to you guys about your own style. I've talked to you about all these different things. So to me, you have to be one of these four coaches: a disciplinarian, a yeller, a fucking technician. Uh, or a recruiter, a go-getter, right? There's only a few people that are all of them. I'm just going to be honest. But it's not bad, especially when you're young guys. You got to become one. And I'll explain this outright so you guys can understand what I'm talking about. But recruiter, are you one? If not, what are you? What I mean by that is you have to be one of these. And at the end of this little presentation on this what it takes to be a football coach, you'll understand what I'm saying. So are you a recruiter? If not, you have to be something else. Do you fall under any of the below listed types of coaches? So here's my definition of recruiter. You are both an on the field coach and off the field coach, meaning relationships have been built and established. You can motherfuck them. You can joke around, but at practice, it's all respect. It's a professional exchange of respect that means they know you're about business it ain't no fucking around i'll buy you a hamburger off the field i can fuck around and we can talk about fucking music movies whatever right we can fuck around right but when we hit that weight room when we hit that field when we hit that study hall lab when you hit that class there's a switch that needs to be turned and if you don't switch it and turn it you are going to be one of these four people Or as a player, you're going to be very limited in what you can actually give to a team or yourself, for that matter, moving forward, expecting to go Division I or NFL, right? So if you can't flip the switch, the best O-linemen in the NFL, just so you know, are the biggest, baddest, most freakish athletically cats you've ever seen in your life. And a lot of normal cats walk up would be scared as fuck of one of them. But you see him out out at Walmart, and this motherfucker – is the nicest person you've ever met in your life. Those are the NFL's best linemen. Jonathan Ogden, Munoz, Larry Allen, Eric Williams, Will Shields. You have to understand, these dudes are freaks, 6'8", 350, no body fat, runs sub five flat, and bench is 450 pounds. And when you see him at Walmart, you're like, damn, that's the nicest dude I've ever seen. But on that field, they hit the practice field, a switch hits, and now he's the biggest asshole and the nastiest fucker on the football field. Field ends, goes to class. If he's in college or in high school, he's in the front row acting accordingly. Yes, ma'am, no, sir. And he's the nicest motherfucker and the teachers are raving about him. Those are the special elite people that play this game. So I got off subject there, but that's what I was trying to talk about. It's similar in the coaching aspect. You have to be one of these things 
and ultimately all of them. So my definition of a recruiter is you recruited that kid because you were an on the field and off the field guy. You have respect of your peers. You played the game at a high level. Some maybe have, some didn't, but you still found your niche. And those kids respect you, obviously, because recruiting is our blood life as coaches. So if you can't recruit, um, you're not going to vary. You, you know, you're, you're, you're replaceable. There's a million fuckers that can coach football, that can yell and be a disciplinarian. But they don't – they don't um, – and let me roll this down because I don't want you to see. Uh, it's too late. But anyway, um, that's my definition. When we hit the field, it's all business. So are you that recruiter where those kids respect you because you recruited them and you may not even be the best coach? You might not be able to coach a drill, but you brought the kid. He respects you. You can control him. He listens. That's a motherfucking hard thing to do. A lot of guys ain't that guy. So you have a huge – asterisk by your name or a star or fi- or whatever you want to put a check to be a good recruiter. All right. So that's one style of coach, one type. Number two is a technician. Are you so detailed that the kids respect you for what you can teach them? Now you didn't recruit any of the kids. You don't kick it with them and chill with them and they don't really fuck with you. Right. You're in the weight room. You're kind of an asshole or what have you. But on the field, you're such a good coach that they respect you for what you can teach them technically, fundamentally. You're such a brainiac and cerebral in this game that you're now teaching those kids something that they've never learned or heard before, and they you automatically grasp their attention. And now they respect you for the simple fact that you're coaching them like nobody ever has, but you can't recruit nobody. You can't talk to nobody. You're kind of a, your own type of dude. That's still a coach that the head coach myself would evaluate. And this is a meeting that I have with my guys and I'm letting them know there's only four styles and we're going through them, but you're either a go-getter and you bring the dudes, they respect you because you got them and they respect you because they listen to you in every aspect because you take care of them. And you can motherfuck them and love on them at the same time. That's the recruiter. Technician, you're the best coach on the field probably. You're a football brainiac motherfucker. You're probably some type of introvert where nobody really fucks with you because you're weird. I've had these dudes, man. Coaches really don't fuck with you. You're kind of on your own in the staff room. You don't really laugh. But you get on that field and it's all business and you're coaching the shit out of them. I will keep that guy. As long as he stays in his lane now, okay? But you can teach every step, every nuance of that position, detail, in detail, and demand that he does it correctly every fucking time. That's a technician. That's what a coach being my definition of a technician. Then you have the yeller. All right. Now, don't think that I'm saying yeller in a bad way, like motherfuckers out there faking it, just yelling. We have those coaches, too, but he's not on this list, obviously, because he would never have made my cut. Right. Yeller, are you putting the fear of God in the players to where they respect you in this regard? If not, what are you? Do you fall under any of the below or above listed types of coaches? My definition of a yeller, okay? Your voice command and content is valid enough to control the group. That don't just mean you're out there fucking yelling because all the kids see that yelling don't affect them. They get yelled at at home or by me or whoever else is out there that's bigger than you regarding your fucking pay scale, right? So just being because you yell doesn't mean shit. Yellers are the worst coaches I've ever had. I hate you having just yellers for no reason. You have to have some validity behind you, your yells, right? So are you such a yeller that they respect you because you know what the fuck you're talking about and et cetera, et cetera? So make sure you know the definition of a yeller and that you can get through to these guys in that regard, all right? Disciplinarian, all right? The fourth style. Do you gut them for anything that is not exactly how you want it? In the weight room, in the classroom, he's late to class, whatever it may be. Do they know you mean business or do you allow 30 fucking water breaks, let the helmets loose, not demand excellence, and then that not that they... And, and allow them not to sprint from drill to drill 
And if not, what are you then? Do you fall under any of the above listed types of coaches? My definition of a disciplinarian, you don't tolerate lackluster effort or performances and you correct it immediately. You handle rule violations when they occur on the spot, not days later. You expect excellence and get the most out of that group daily. That's a disciplinarian in my opinion. That's what it, it's what it is to me. So you have to understand these are the four coaches, recruiter, technician, the yeller, the disciplinarian. This is what you're going to have on your staff. You just don't know it yet, maybe, coaches. This is what's on your staff, all right? So make sure you look at this, you understand it, and because guess what? There is no more coaches. There is no more types. So you're one of the above coaches or none of them. So a great coach is three of these four types. A master coach is all four. And a young coach, which 90% of we're going to coach with, um, needs to be one of these types by at least – set a goal by game five or by game seven, you can be two types of these. And then you can say you made progress. All right. So that's just what it is. Um, that's something else. Recruiting philosophy, something else. So those are my stuff, my four types of coaches, uh, what it actually takes. And that's the name of this show because there's a lot more to get into, but that is what the four styles are defined by me at least when you're actually out there recruiting or on the field or in the weight room or your everyday operational coach, what style are you? And you should ask yourself that and then look at yourself like, damn, I do bring all the kids on campus. I do. They do listen to me, but I don't really know football yet. I can't really yell at anyone else other than the kids I recruited. And I'm really not that disciplinarian yet. I'm more of the players coach guy. You know, I let shit slide, right? So you're a recruiter. Now, I don't have no recruiting fucking – I can't talk to kids. I don't really know how to do that yet, but I've been a football junkie my whole life. I can fucking coach the shit out of D-line. I'm great with hands, play eye placement, running our feet, replacing our hands, leverage, pad level, taking on doubles. I know all this shit, right? You're a technician. Then you got the yeller who puts the fear of God in motherfuckers. Um but he's, he, he has enough validity to be yelling at you and he can't do anything else. And then you got the disciplinarian man that guts the kid for every single thing. And that kid respects the shit out of him or fears him because he's going to discipline me. You got to find out what style of coach you are. So, all right. So that's the, that's the start of it all. Oh shit. Let me get out of this. Um, now I'm going to get into things that it takes to, when you're building a program. All right. This is so I created this deal. I put 2021 spring ball coaching expectations. All right. This is what it takes to be a coach. If you're really running a real program, these are things that you should be making for your staff. So for my so so here's my I got coaches on the left, right? I made this spreadsheet years ago to, and I put coaches on it. And this is something we do right before spring ball or what have you, right? And then I put out equipment. This is this is everything that a head coach has to handle. This shit that you you, you guys are probably looking at, like, fuck is all this, right? <clears throat> Don't worry about what it is yet. This is the way down the line. But primary focuses, day-to-day -day duties, your spring recruiting duties, and then your top two spring ball goals. I want to see that from my staff, and I'm going to hand this out. I want to have them put their top two goals on there. They'll give it to me. I want to give them their primary focus, right? My DC, control defensive energy, play-by-play, -play, a day-by-day, -day, right? Coach play-by-play -play and do it day-by-day. -day. That's just what defensive coaches should be. In, they should have that instilled in their brain, man. <clears throat> like, let's say, for instance, offensive coordinator, have a plan of attack, stick with it, have, have a staff on point, on time, organized and crisp, right? Offenses are, need to be organized, structured, smooth, Great huddles, fucking alignments. It's a, it's a different deal than defense, right? Here's my D-line guy. Hold your kids accountable. Be a stickler for the little things. Because why? You're a position group guy. Your guys, you have 10 guys. They all have to be fucking efficient individually. They need to be technicians. They need to be disciplined. They need to be assholes in the weight room. Those are D-linemen. 
Williams, okay, let's say it's offensive line. Lead by example. Bring energy daily. Don't accept anything less than perfection because if you make the wrong step and you say it's a six-inch step and you put a pick-up, put-down step as an offensive lineman, now what? You're not perfect. perfect. So little shit. Let's say another O-line coach, right? It's assistant O-line. Fly around. Be an asshole. Build relationships at the same time. Coach fast. Correct it on the film later. Remember, there's no time for clinics on the field when we're filming. We film everything. Let's coach it on the film. In the meantime, fly around. You're the assistant online guy. Be an asshole. At the same time, love on them and build that relationship. Find So then a linebacker guy or a running back guy, whoever, right? Find six legit guys. Max rep them. Hold them to the fire for anything they do wrong. The next guy, DBs, coach fast, high energy, have film tight. So he's the film coordinator. If you look at day-to-day duties, he is the film and field equipment, top priority for him. And then his his day-to-day is grade and class checks. He's checking on kids' grades and class checks. If you go up day-to-day duties, you can see what every coach has. They have their own responsibilities that I've issued out, right? Here's a coach, coach hard, be organized, coach detail. Survey the scene, each and every play, drill, period. Every period in the, on the script, every drill and every play, survey the scene. That's a quarterback coach, all right? Wide receiver coach, teach in-game drills only. No camp drills. We're not coaching camp no more. We're in spring ball. Take the camp drills out. Stance, starts, root, routes, hands, in that order. I want stance and starts every day if I'm a whiteout guy, right? Um, be hard and keep the energy high. Linebackers and special team guy, trial and error. It's a trial and error period because it's spring ball. So we're going to plan for our future. We're going to check out if we have any special teams guys, right? But we are going to drill special teams. We are going to install special teams in the spring. But just know that might not be our team at my level. So we're not going to waste too much time on it. But we are going to get the coaches coached up on it. Remember, because if we don't do anything, we're not sharpening. All right, we're not sharpening our tools, right? So, coach coaches up. This is still going to be this plan, regardless of the players. We can still implement, install, and get all our installations done with our special teams, right? So, and he's coaching linebackers. So make sure the linebackers are accountable. Work with the trainer because he handles what. If you look to the right, he handles injured guys, and he's their worst nightmare. That means. He handles guys that are injured. The trainer put on the list and says he can't go, but he's not. He's hurt, but he's not injured. So he handles those guys and he guts them during practice or after practice if he's coaching. Right. Um, And then me, the head coach, right. Continue to monitor, mentor, assist assistants and guide you towards being great. Ripping ass is part of the process. It's part of the profession. Nothing personal. It's business. And then what do I do? Fundraise, network, continue to build the program, monitor the entire program day to day. And then I come up with the recruiting plan of attack, right? So those are things that I've had to do. And then everyone else here has their own recruiting duties that they must have to, they're going to have to meet. Find nation's top five D1 possible D linemen by May 7th. Follow them on social media. Build relationships. Starts now if you're going to sign them in the summer. So a lot of things, people don't realize how that works. So you always have to be recruiting because that's our blood life. And remember this, coaches, especially you college guys, the time you don't text them, somebody else is. So that's that, all right? That's kind of a day-to-day operational deal. Now, this is what it takes to be a football coach. Are you guys sitting around home during a pandemic that aren't coaching? Are you creating different things? So let's go through a football. Let's go through a, I'm going to show you kind of what I do as far as a, uh, this is our spring objectives on defense. All right. I wanted these things met for objectives. I wanted, this is the segment for whatever we're doing. All right. Let's say we're in spring ball practice one, whatever it may be. And then these are the segments on the left. I want tempo every time. So all we're doing in these boxes, we're putting a yes or a no. I had these boards huge. They're magnetic boards, real nice and pretty. And all I have on there was yeses and nos. So we just slap a yes magnet on there or a no magnet on there. And then 
if there were things that required percentages or numbers or what have you, I had certain things done individually so you can slap a one and a zero on there. But we made it real easy so you can reuse them. All right. So tempo. Yes or no. And that's my evaluation. And I'm slapping it on there. This is after every spring ball practice. 11 hats on the film each day. I want to see 11 hats from my defense on the film every practice, every endo group, every fucking pursuit drill, whatever it may be. Zero penalties and inside run team, seven on seven. Practice discipline. I see a coach allows something. So no. And then I'm obviously have my individual notes on that coach. Engage staff. Is the staff engaged with what you're teaching on that side of the ball coordinator? Uh, Field spacing and organization, which I'm going to get into that too because I want to make sure you guys see that. Field spacing and organization, huge. Zero offsides. Did we? I hate being offsides on defense, man. It's the it's the you're giving them the fucking game by doing stupid undisciplined shit like that. Energy, high energy. Reps. Are we getting reps, coaches, or are we talking about reps? Coach it on the film. Don't hold clinics on the field during my practice time. Get reps, reps, reps. Coach it on the film. You know why, head coaches? Because now you're filming it all, and now your coaches can literally learn the, how to coach it up on the film and now you can help the coach understand what he's actually looking at if he's a young guy. And now you can help him by the more reps you coach and see on film. Now we can go fucking take that to a, co- a meeting of the, with the linebackers or the running backs or whatever, right? And then the worst case of all on defense, you should never have a loaf. So these are objectives for spring ball. These aren't the same for a game during the season. This is spring ball defensive objectives for practice. This is just for practice, all right? So understand, this isn't a game. This is practice. Now, I also have an offensive one, and I have some special teams one, right? So special teams, tempo, drill structure and organization, personnel depth, practice discipline, staff being engaged by the special team coordinator, field spacing and organization. And everyone's probably asking, what is that? I'm going to show you snaps. We want to get snaps. If it's, if I only give you seven minutes for punt, I want to get six or seven punts off because you're already installed this in your walkthroughs that I've given you. And I know we haven't gone over structure of that. I haven't even talked about all that, but I gives walkthroughs. Then you install it in your, by yourself with a meeting in a meeting. And then you install it, then you chalk it and then you walk it. All right. This shit should be in. So when we come out on the field and we got punt, at least you got your guys. You got an assistant yelling out who's in. Punt team goes in there. That's why when I talk about special teams in a couple weeks, I'll show you how I organize special teams and how it makes it easy. So you just yell out a name and those guys know they're on that particular. So let's just say Sharks, Sharks, Sharks. Let's say Sharks is our punt team, right? Um, or bomb squad, whatever you want to call it, right? They run, they know who they're out. And now if they don't run out, if you you only got 10 on the field, you motherfuck whoever it is, you got them. And then the backup knows, okay, I'm in. Pursuit. Are we pursuing the football on punt, on kickoff, anything like that? Reps, 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 reps. Remember, special teams, you're not getting a lot of time in my practice schedule right now in spring. You will in the fall, but in spring, We're introducing it. We're coaching coaches and we're just lining up. And then so there is kids that will be returning. At least they know. Right. Plus, our coaches know now by the time we hit summer, when we install this, it's full go. Now we're putting guys in there and we're we're, we're breaking down reps on depth chart. Loafs. I don't want to see loafs on special teams because if you can't, you might not make my football team. But if you're a fucking dude on special teams, you may make it. If you're shitty on offense and defense and you're fucking shitty on special teams, you're going to get cut. So understand, you better get in where you fit in, right? All right. Now, you want to talk about structure. Coaches probably haven't – a lot of you guys haven't seen this or you don't know what it is or what have you. This is something that I've created years ago, and this is just part of being organized and being a head coach, right? You want to make sure that you structure something where – your coaches know where they are on the football field at all times, even down to the trainer and the filmers, right? 
So here's an, here's an end zone with the arrow in it and down here, right? So we stay off the middle. So let's see that 10 yards in the 50-yard line from, 50, from 45 to 45? We stay off it. That means the trainers walk it, the water walks it, whatever is in there, it's neutral. Nobody goes in there. That way you don't have balls crossing the field. You don't have DBs stepping on wide receivers' feet. You have to be structured and organized. So understand, nobody's on this fucking area between the 45 and the 45. So we're staying off it. All right. Now, place your position groups where you want them at, where you want them at, right? Plus, where are your filmers at so these guys can have endo filmed or group filmed or what have you? So, you see the arrows? I made this on a spreadsheet years ago. It took me fucking forever, right? Here's the receivers. So, wide outs, they're from the 40 all the way to the 10-yard line. And they don't cross the hash or the sideline. Now, remember, this is endo. This is pre-practice. This is their own drills. Um, even when we do one-on-ones, those, those guys in the DBs will, will, will meet now. We have it all organized, right? Wideouts are right there. They got cones and four footballs. That's what they get, all right? So that's right there. Now, quarterbacks, we're in the middle. Hash to hash in the middle of the field. And we have we have basically 40 to the 10 because I don't like to go into the end zone because I just want to stay away from those things because we have shoots and sleds and shit down there. Then on the running backs, they're where the ride outs are on the other side. All right. They're down here. They got bags and cones, four balls, etc. The O line is down here in the end zone on the right side only. All right. You see. They, but, but they start down here pre-practice, and they have this whole end zone down here. That's why I want guys to stay out of it. He might have a shed down here, or a, shed, a shoot down here, and he might have a sled down here, and he does all his endo shit here, right? So O-line's down here. They got cans. They got the trash cans. They got the bags. They got the boards, pipes, shoots, whatever it may be, and one ball, right? All right, that's the D-line. I mean, O-line. Punters are down here. They're kicking it over the end zone or what have you, but they're usually either on the sideline all the way over here, which I didn't show, or they're just right here in between, and they're kicking it over on that side. And I got the DBs. See where the DBs are now. They're opposite the wideouts, right? And why do I put the DBs opposite the wideouts? Because both use balls. Both are doing a lot of lateral cuts, change of direction, backpedaling, route running more likely that those two fucks run into each other some type of way. So let's kitty corner them. Linebackers are up opposite of the running backs. So the other design of this is when they meet up for one-on-ones or pods or blitz pickup or inside run, whatever, I make them run. So they run to each other. So there's never no any walking out there. There's never any bullshitting. And coaches also have to show control the tempo by running around. All right. Then I got the kickers and the snappers in the middle, and there's a goalpost, and they can kick right there down the middle, right? And then the D line is over here in the end zone opposite the O line. So they got hoops, bags, whatever, pop ups, whatever D line's using that day, all right? So remember, we got equipment guys setting all this up. You got your coaches giving equipment guys what they need, and equipment guys understand where shit's lined up. And it's just something that you go over with your staff. We show it, and then guess what I do right after I show this? We go out and walk it. They all have this piece of paper. We go out, and we actually just the coaches, and I'm coaching the coaches on where we will be. It's where you are. It's where you are. If you want shit done, you need to get it to the managers before. Um, you got to get it to the managers before practice, obviously, right? Get it to them before practice. So make sure – that you're getting this shit to your managers and so forth before practice. So that's just a little structure um, of a field. All right. That's just what it is. I want to make sure that I went over some things, just shit that it takes to be a football coach, man. And, and uh, little things, a lot of people don't think about, and it's right here. So I want to make sure that you can create something like this and uh, you know, Go over with your guys and get out organized, get structured. What do the quarterbacks need? You're in the middle of the field, so you can throw cross or, you know, we got cone drills, pipe drills, bag drills, all the shit we want to do. Throw sand, bean bags at them, um, you know, wave drills, whatever we're doing with the cues here, right? 
Then the kicker, we got hash marks. We're at holder and snapper. Now, this is a limited time. The holder and snapper at your school may be an O-line D lineman or it could be a tight end linebacker or running whatever it may be, right? So then when we go from here to scripted schedules, now everyone knows where we are based on a color coordination scheme that I've created. And I'll go over that later because the filmers also need to know who they are filming and when they're filming it, right? So DBs may want endo. So my, I might have four cameras out there and four coaches or four, four cameras and four angles, two tight, two wide, two on the high pot or in the, or in the, or in the, uh, on the, in the trees on a deer stand or whatever we, you want to call them. And then I might have guys in the stands up top or wherever, but we're, we're filming as much as possible. So if we got one-on-ones white house DBs eventually, now we're filming that from, do we want the back of it filmed or do we want the side of it filmed? Plus, there's other things that we do with film that I'll get into another day. But actually, we put a GoPro on a broomstick and we'll have a guy hold the camera on a broomstick right behind the wideouts and the DBs. So now guess what? I see they're dropping their hip. I see their eyes. I see their shoulders. I see their head. I see their back. We see their posture. We see everything. We, I do that with QBs a lot. I'll film it on a broomstick with a GoPro and I'll put it put it on the broomstick. We tape it on there or whatever you want to do. Make a little, we actually make a little deal and you walk, you have somebody walking it. If you're doing DB one, maybe you're doing a release drill. It's really great for DBs and wideouts to do release drills, hold it on a broomstick, hold it right over them. And you coach it up that way and you get it on film that way. Another angle of film. And you can still be having the guy in the tree stand or whatever, filming it from the wide. So you get two angles there. Same with wideouts, same with running backs. Now, if we got running backs, wide out or running backs, linebackers one on one, probably a wider shot angle film. So you have to organize all your film angles and everything on how you want shit filmed and so on and so forth. So these are all things that you have to do um, to make this happen. So this is just some structured stuff that I wanted you to see. Um, but you get an idea now how to organize shit, how to structure it. And uh, hopefully that type of shit helps you out, but making sure you know where everybody is. Plus, you know, now for your head coach, now I know where I'm going, where I'm at. And now we all have an area. Players don't stop. Players better not be in that fucking uh, middle of that field. And coaches better not be in the middle of that field. And I better not see balls hitting that field. And I better not see players in there. So I don't want that's that eliminates injuries, right? We eliminate drama. We don't allow people on the field. We got them off the field on the sideline if they're not in, if we're doing a drill. Now, if we're doing team seven on seven, whatever, it's in the middle, right? Obviously, we know where we are, but we still stay off to 50. Why? Because that's the rule. So we stay over here. We do inside run or we over here inside run. We got an end zone camera here. We got one down here and we got them over here. So it's all different. Depends on how you do it. And there's so many variables. Just look at it, figure it out. And uh, hopefully you guys gain something out of that. All right. Um, Oops, let me see. I'm trying to look for my damn offensive. Uh... All right, here's my offensive one I wanted to show you. So here's the offensive spring. So if you're offensive guys, all right. We got our, We already talked defense and special teams. We got our segment on the left, tempo. Yes or no, did we meet that objective? Correct A and A. You guys know what A and A is? Alignment and assignment. Correct alignment and assignment pre and post snap. Did they line up right pre? Did they run the right route? Did they do the, did they, did he run the right um, protection? Did the O-line step right? Was all their alignment and assignments correct? Yes or no? Ball security is job security. We'll have a big thing on that. But everybody out there on that particular snap that's being filmed had ball security. Yes or no? Because it takes all of them. Wide out may catch the ball over here. The running back may be running that way. And we want everyone to get a ball that should be in it if we're doing some type of offensive drill or snap or play, right? We want to get guys out. So coaches are coaching them up. They're handing the running back a ball, even if it was a pass after he went through his protection hand him a ball, and he's carrying the ball. I want to see guys carry the ball as many, much as possible so I can grade the ball security. Practice discipline. Guys, chin straps unbuckled. Because remember, 
you don't see that on the defensive one. You see it on the offensive one because my defense is a nasty and asshole I already instilled that in winter. My offenses are all going to be, you know, everyone's offense is prima donna. They're going to have their chin straps unbuckled. They're fucking, they don't have the right pads in and the refs are going to fucking pull them out of the game. You teach it now, coach. You don't coach how to win on Saturday on Saturday. You coach it on Sundays and Monday going into that next Saturday, right? Practice discipline. Engage staff. Is the staff engaged? Do we know what we're doing off the schedule and the scripting? And understand that. Field spacing and organization. We just went over that with the field spacing sheet. Zero false starts. That's like the defensive offsides to me. I hate fucking false starts, just like defensive offsides. Those are two pet peeves of mine, along with ball security. Bad snaps. Another pet peeve. Centers and cues. When do you guys go out there? I've made it. It, it was mandated for my guys to go out early. They had to go out early and get 50 to 100 snaps in. My long snappers, holders, and cues and centers had to go get a million snaps. If it snowed or rained and we're in spring or winter, they go inside the weight room or the gym, they get a million snaps. We're going to be doing something like wide receivers. Snows or rain, guess what I do? And I'll go over that. I'll show you, actually. I go buy tennis ball machines. I bought five tennis ball machines. We had them in different little, you know, racquetball courts and shit. Whiteouts go in there. They actually had to log catches. How many catches they get? They had to go catch a thousand balls a week, a tennis ball though, or a racquetball, but a tennis ball. Racquetballs are harder. They bounce and it's even better. But if you can find racquetballs, great, but they make those machines, buy them on Amazon. They shoot them out, man. You can turn that bitch up to 60 miles an hour. Because you're in weather, inclement weather areas, you want to get shit done. You're not just going to call it because of the cause of rain, right? Go get something done. We're always doing something. Reps, reps, reps. Offense, you got to get reps. Fucking coaching clinics. O-line is about the only one I allow to be talked to, like, after the play real quick. But it's quick. I'm on your ass still, even coaches. But at least I only, other guys, nah. Let's go. We'll coach it on the film. Loafs. How many wideouts do you see loafing on run plays? That's why we don't even block on run plays no more. I took that shit away a couple years ago. We run routes now on offense. On every run play, we're running full speed routes because we're, we got an RPO built in. And even if we don't have an RPO, you don't know it on defense because you're running a route at your ass. We're running full speed routes on offense every snap. So you better get in shape and you better go recruit a gang of motherfuckers. So uh, loafs, we don't allow it. It better not ever see it. Um, so that's an offensive spring ball objective sheet, right? So come up with your objective sheets. Now you take this, you go get it printed on a big scale, make it magnetic, and you go get that shit done, man. You go get it done and you, 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 you get yes and no magnets or whatever you're, you're, you want to do. And you start slapping them on there and the kids see them in meetings. We haven't met any fucking objectives over here. Defense, offense, special teams. So make sure... If they don't see it, coaches, you're not going to get nothing out of them. Just telling you. So understand that. Um, let me see real quick. Sorry. Okay, the last thing I want to talk about here is something that uh, might might hit you in the mouth in, uh, in a good way, right? Um, I want you guys to see this. All right. You guys see that? This is a question you got. You coaches got to ask yourself, man. Do you always give 100% at practice in the weight room and in the classroom? Or does your entire week at practice in the weight room and in the classroom equal 100%? You guys understand what I'm saying? Did you give 100% in all those scenarios every time? Or do you equal 100%? So I created this. I just started thinking about it, man. And I created this years ago. And I used to ask my coaches, is this you? Did you give 9% on a Monday, 12% on Tuesday? Hump Wednesday, you gave 30%. Thursday, uh, we're getting close to game in high school. I give 5%. Friday, if you play on Saturdays, it's, it's game day before game, I give 4%. Saturday, it's game day. I give 35%. 
Sunday, I'm, I'm giving 5%. I'm tired from Saturday. Or is this you? Monday, 100 fucking percent. Tuesday's 100 percent. Wednesday might be 1,000 percent. Like, when are you going to turn it up? And if you haven't, if you haven't noticed, last year you saw the head coach, good dude, um, Coach uh, C up at Eastern Michigan, they adopted my work shirts. I got mechanic shirts for my guys, and every D1 that would come see what I was doing, uh, there's a lot of them adopted it. And they actually wore it in a bowl game at Eastern Michigan last year. But on Wednesday, I called it Work Boot Wednesday. I created mechanic shirts, looked exactly like a mechanic shirt, had the name right here, looked like a mechanic. It was a navy blue, greasy-looking fucking uh, mechanic shirt. We wore that on Wednesdays. I had a hard hard hat for him too, but we it was too hard to coach in, right? So we called it Work Boot Wednesday, and we coached in those, and it was hump day. I wanted to go harder than I did on Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday. So, right? so I created the mechanic shirt, and coaches loved it. It was a great idea. I motivated coaches because if you're not motivating coaches, coaches, your own coaches, you, you, you're getting complacent. That's why I don't sleep. That's why I'm always up. That's why I don't let an alarm clock be the only reason I wake up. That's why I'm always up thinking about how to be better the next day, how to be, how to do something to shock treat my guys. And if you, and if you don't think about your coaches first, then the players will never be great. You got to coach coaches. You got to get coaches to buy in. You got to motivate your coaches. Um, Hopefully you've hired coaches that have self-motivation, but also even self-motivating guys, you got to still motivate them as the leader, right? You still got to come up with ways outside the box thinking that can get those guys to the next level, get them where they couldn't get themselves. So are you a hundred percent guy every day or are you a fucking 9%? Do you equal a hundred percent during the week? Because the 100% total at the end of the week is not a guy I want. And you're not a guy that's going to make it. I'm just telling you. 100% every day. All right. So you got to ask yourself, what kind of guy are you, man? And that's just uh, real shit. So, you know, hopefully uh, you understand that and and uh, you grasp that concept there and get through it. Um let me pull this last thing up here. Um, this one right here, guys. Do you know what doesn't kill you makes you better? I tell my coaches that every day because they always have some type of excuse. Don't let them have fucking excuses. So why are you holding yourself and each other back from greatness if you know that you're not going to kill yourself by working harder? Why are you holding yourself and each other back from greatness? I used to tell my coaches if we lost a day, I like, dude, we lost a day on the field. Do you fucking care? You only have 10 practices or so before the first game, or you only have so many meetings. You only have so many things you can do before you lose it and it's over and you're going to be sitting on YouTube coaching from a fucking chair, right? Figure out the time you have, figure out what you're invested in, figure out that what doesn't kill you makes you better. So fucking stop holding each other back. Stop holding yourself back from going to get greatness. Shoot for the stars. You may just land on the moon, man. All right. Hey, appreciate you guys, man. Hopefully you got something out of this one. And uh, for the coaching show, I'll see you guys Tuesday. Um, And uh, we'll get into a whole nother bag of worms and uh, it'll be a little uh, more detailed. And I just wanted to get this out the way because I wanted to show coaches how to create objective boards, how to create um, different um, field organizational things and, and different shit like that. So hopefully you got something out of it. If not, boom, I'll see you on Tuesday for the coaches show. Uh, I'll see you Monday for the slapdick podcast. Good luck. Good betting. Um, I didn't get a chance to have Brandon Lang yesterday on the slap dick. He's not feeling well. I I had to go get a chiropractic appointment. So we'll be back next Friday for picks, but I don't pick college anyway, but shit. Um, Hey, we're in a new world starting today. uh, So go out there and be safe. Hey, shake somebody else's hand. You don't know, man. Appreciate your peace. These things are, are, uh, in gyms, and it's as cold as the dope games, right? I tell you, people.
I ain't watching no games. Shit. I think Clemson beats uh, Notre Dame, though, with my kid DJ, quarterback. All right, guys, I appreciate you. Peace.